because it's very hard when something is overtaking you that when you're in the midst of a of of a mania it doesn't seem like that it just seems like what's happening it's the main thing it must be the truth it's what everyone is talking about everyone's saying the same thing and you just have to start recognizing oh everyone is saying the same thing that's a little weird and furthermore you can't say anything else if you express any kind of dissent you are destroyed. The fact that that to me is one of the biggest indicators of a mania is you cannot differ with it without real risk to yourself. And that's why I'm so suspicious of the climate situation. In defense of 21st century social manias, didn't we have pretty much their equivalent in the 20th century, which were the fascist movement, the communist movement, which led to an enormous loss of life, tyranny, societies oppressed for 70 years. And in some ways, if, if, if susceptibility to these mass hysterical movements is an ineradicable feature of human nature, isn't it better that it should be directed towards cancelling other people on Twitter and sort of virtue <laughs> signalling and moral grandstanding than it is in these kind of mass political movements which disfigured the 20th century. I mean, of course, things like the trans cult caused real world harm um, and people lost their livelihoods as a result of, you know, not complying with BLM dogma. But for the most part, they don't seem quite as horrific or as destructive as the manias that swept through the 20th century. So in that respect, shouldn't we defend them as a sort of less <laughs> toxic alternative? I mean, yes, if we're at least not in the middle of World War Two. And uh, maybe we should wake up every day and be thankful. Um, the trouble, I, I, I would be perfectly content to let this stuff wash over uh, Twitter or X, uh, uh, Facebook, whatever, as long as people in positions of power ignored it. And I think that's where, um, where we've really been let down and why these movements have been important. Because, I mean, for example, the only reason that I'm still here, that I've managed to publish this book, is that I have a publisher that is willing to publish me. But there have been plenty of other writers in this period who have lost their publishers and therefore lost their voice. Well, you need people in positions of power who can make decisions and protect freedom of speech. And there have been all too many people across the board, across the institutions during this period who have completely capitulated and said, oh no, there's a, there's a little storm on Twitter and it's going to make us look bad. Well, you know, sorry, can't publish you anymore. And they're out the door or you're fired. You know, and that's, that's where we failed. And I think that's what's shocking. And that's the, o that's the only reason that these things are important. If it were just a matter of, of people going nuts at their keyboards, well, then you're right. That's, then it's, it's a kind of safe uh, outlet for poisonous energy.